Welcome back to the Garden of Enders. Glad to have you guys as always. Uh, today, uh, this evening, is kind of special. We got a lot of uh, fruit trees that I've been waiting to get. Um, they've arrived. And so I'm going to quickly show you those. Um, and then the rest of this video will take place tomorrow, uh, which you'll be seeing it that day. Today will be tomorrow. You know what I'm trying to say. So I will show you a quick little run through of what we got. Pretty excited. Check it out. The first is going to be uh, this beautiful tree, and this guy is a cold hardy pomegranate. It is a Russian variety. Uh, we're super excited, and as you can see, it is small, um, but we uh, we expect big things uh, out of this. So this will survive here in our zone so we're quite excited to get that planted uh, fresh pomegranate sounds amazing I picked this up at um, a local box store and I wanted another variety of fig from what we had and um, I, this one is hardy it's the brown uh, turkey fig and as you can see there's quite a few uh, on here already so that was kind of cool just an added perk um, so hopefully they'll come good I'm not going to be planting this in the ground I'm actually just going to be transferring it to a five gallon bucket uh, figs really suffer with nematodes in the soil so this will not be going uh, in soil but uh, anyways I wanted to show you that I had to, I just had to get it this guy um, and keep in mind all these trees they look kind of stressed and uh, they are, they've been in the mail. Um, but this, um, the guy that is all destroyed, um, some of the leaves are okay. Uh, we'll, it'll make a comeback. Uh, I know how to treat it right. This, and I just saw this tag. I knew what it was, but I didn't think they marked it. Um, this, I'm getting close there, is a pawpaw. So, for those of you that don't know what a pawpaw is, a pawpaw is, as you can tell, it's kind of a tropical looking plant based on the leaves there. Um, but it is, um, it grows here <clears throat> in the United States and uh, it produces a mango sized fruit. It's got about 12 seeds, two rows, six each uh, in each of the rows. And it is, uh, there's a couple different varieties, this particular variety. Uh, we'll have a custardy flavor uh, with some vanilla undertones. It's basically, uh, to make it really uh, simple, to, it's basically like a Boston cream pie. That's uh, kind of what it's going to taste like. So like a Boston cream pie. If you can imagine that, or if you've never had one, go get yourself one. That's what a pawpaw, this variety of pawpaw will taste like. Uh, this they threw in for free because I bought a couple. It's another Meyer lemon. Um, I up, upsized this pot. It's the only one I've repotted so far. Um, as you know, I will not be planting citrus outside here. Uh, it won't make it. And then over here, so I showed you the pomegranate, I showed you the pawpaw. Um, just trying to decide where I want to plant these. But this, I believe this is the Santa Rosa. I'm almost positive. Yes, the Santa Rosa. Um, I got the Santa Rosa because it's such a beautiful plum. It's very sought after. Um, so super excited about that. And then the Santa Rosa needed a pollinator. So why not get a Methley, um, another sought after plum. This one was the biggest tree. Um, this was a seven footer. That was a four to five foot. Looks like it's probably over five foot uh, or right there about. And then uh, the pawpaw was a two to three footer, which it's every bit of two, over two feet, so it's about on pace. The pomegranate, they only had one size, so we didn't get a chance to 
um, go much bigger but yeah it is so anyways just trying to figure out where we're gonna plant them here my wife tells me I'm not allowed to take over this space that is for the family so uh, I've got to figure out a way to make it work on the outskirts here uh, the asparagus that's gonna stay these beds are undecided and over there is where I'll have a shed but these um, beds here are undecided on whether we're going to keep them. Um, but look at this spinach, by the way. Guys, if you've never grown... Sorry, this is totally off topic. I just had to show you. If you've never grown red Malabar or Malabar spinach of any type, oh my gosh, you're missing out. Like, grow it. It is so... This I planted this in April 15th or, or maybe prior, uh, before the first frost. And it is continuing to grow all through the summer all through the heat it is just pumping it out um, doing really well and I planted another variety the New Zealand uh, spinach and it is still doing good there are still some but a lot of the leaves have died but but even this is is holding on there's more I don't know, you can't really see it but there's more underneath of this screen covering but anyways that that red Malabar holy moly I'm actually gonna do a harvest because I'm gonna continue to grow this now that I see that it's working all the way through um, until the end of the season so but that's just a quick little rundown wanted to show you guys tomorrow I will bring you along and we'll get these puppies planted hey guys welcome back so this is the process as I shared with you we're going to get these trees put in and so over here uh, I've started to kind of show you the idea behind what I'm doing and that's going to be getting the plum tree in uh, as well as the other plum in uh, this is the methylene plum that's going to go here and the Santa Rosa is going to go beside it. Uh, I want them close together because they are pollinators of each other. Uh, so it allows us to get bigger harvests. Uh, and it's kind of cool if you look here we have a flower already on uh, this. And these haven't even been transplanted. I've just been heavily um, watering and keeping the soil um, very uh, rich. And so it's funny, I, there's a bloom. but. It's kind of cool because the plums almost like peaches, they, they grow right off of the branches. They don't hang, they're almost attached. So, but what I've done is I've made it, you always want to, when you're planting your fruit trees or any tree, you always want to make sure that you're whole, right? So if I center this, if I center this in this hole, you want to make sure that your hole is at least two times the size of the root ball, at least. So, as you can see, if I were to assume that the root ball is all the way to the edges of this, I, I don't know for sure, I haven't pulled it out, then one, two. So really I have three times the size of that root ball in each direction. And so I made it a little bit bigger. Um, and then what we'll do, and there's a sod bug, um, what we'll do is I will dig down um, roughly about the same depth. And I made it, I like to make them bigger because uh, I'm going to provide extra nutrients into that soil that's directly around the tree and then I'll add some uh, rooting uh, hormones and, and stuff that will help promote root growth prior to our first frost which will probably come uh, in the past it's been right around Thanksgiving so it's uh, it's the very beginning of September so we've got all the way through September and October to get um, some root growth going. Now it's gonna get colder, so it's not gonna stimulate as much. Um, but again, I wanna get this plant as established as possible, um, so that way it will be protected this winter. I believe we're gonna have a very uh, wet winter. At least that's what um, uh, people are saying and studies are, are showing. So we will dig this down uh, and get it in there. Uh, plums, uh, like sandy, loamy soil, so and a lot of organic matter so I'll be mixing in some manure and some compost uh, as well as some mushroom compost as well as some earthworm castings uh, and they like a more acidic soil uh, although they'll thrive in any uh, any soil your clays and all those things they do tend to like more of an acidic soil so um, I will be putting in peat moss uh, as well uh, and then I'll be putting sand in because again they like it to be a little bit more sandy or loomy so that'll be what's going into this hole um, and I will walk you guys through that process of how I mix the dirt um, and, and exactly what I do as well as the, the root um, 
uh, fertilizer or the growth formula that I use for the roots. So without further ado, it's supposed to be 91 today. Uh, it's still early. Uh, I've got this started. I want to get this dug. I want to get this other Santa Rosa in uh, beside it here. And then uh, I've got three blueberry bushes uh, to dig holes and get those in. So uh, it's going to be a busy morning. I'm going to try to get all this done and take you guys along. Uh, but that's where we're at. So stay tuned. All right guys, so as you can see, I've got it filled up, got the whole dug. Um, I've got a, a mixture, a soil mix I made of a variety of stuff that's around here. Um, it's just been too hot. I, I didn't have a chance to walk you through that process, but I didn't get a chance to top dress this soil um, with worm castings, which I did there. You can see on top the darker area is the top dressing of worm castings and now because uh, plums like a sandier soil I'm gonna mix in this last layer um, I didn't put sand in I was gonna incorporate it in after with the worm castings so that's what I'm gonna do now um, and I'm gonna put some of this sand on there so bear with me And there's no right amount of sand. It's just kind of what you feel is best. So I already have sand in the soil. Um, but again, I wanted to be able to mix the worm castings in. So uh, we'll get this all. So that's why I'm not going really deep is that soil down there towards the bottom already has, as you can see, a lot of fresh manure and compost was put in here. Uh, more compost, which is good because this will help feed this plant. The proper nutrients it needs to set itself up. So, and I dug this hole probably 18 inches deep. And as you can see, uh, it's not staggered, it is literally as wide as you see it 18 inches around so it was quite a beast of a hole especially just cover up some of those top roots there keep those protected um it was quite a beast of a hole especially in like 90 degree weather 
with a heat index of uh, like 101 or some something crazy like that. I've taken multiple breaks because it's just not safe to be outside. I'm still young, I can do it. But uh, you know, when you start to feel lightheaded, you wanna go ahead and just take your time. It's not a marathon. I have plenty of time to get these trees in. I don't have a lot of days to do them. You know, I have one to two days a week to try to get stuff done like this, but you know, you gotta, you gotta take your time. You don't wanna overdo it. So if it's hot in your area, take your time. Make sure you stay hydrated. Um, it's really important. You don't wanna, you know, end up in the hospital um, because you went overboard just for a, a fruit tree. So, anyways, now that I've got that mixed in and I've got a lot of this stuff broke up, we're gonna go ahead and I like to use a root stimulator um, to try to get this plant to, to, and I roughed up the roots a little bit on the outsides and on the top, but I wanna try to get this plum tree. This is a methyl plum, by the way. I'm using, it's by Fertilome. It's a root stimulator and plant starter solution. Um, so it's, it's really good for trees, uh, getting them set up, getting those roots going, because again, that's what's gonna keep this tree safe uh, throughout the winter. So it's three and a half tablespoons per gallon. So I've got a gallon here. And we're gonna pour this, not all around, but around where the root is. And so we know that the root is just right here. And so we're gonna use this whole gallon. We're gonna heavily saturate. And it's gonna run off. But the idea is that again, it gets the roots going. All right, now I'm gonna water this in. Whoop, I don't have it on blast there. I'm just gonna water this in. None of this soil is wet. So we want to make sure that, and again, it's sandy, so it will it'll drain well. But the bottom's clay. You know, that's what this soil is here is. It's mostly clay. So this just allows me to get a good setup and a start for this plum. And uh, I'm really happy with how it looks here. I think it's going to be in a good location. So we'll get this watered in and I'll be right back. All right, so we got it watered. Uh, we're gonna let this uh, soak in. You can see it's kind of puddled up. Um, the peat moss, uh, until it initially gets itself uh, wet, uh, it kind of acts like a, a concrete. It's kind of funny, but it, it'll, it'll incorporate itself down. So we'll wait for this for a second and then we'll go ahead and, and uh, I mulch everything. So we're gonna put a layer of mulch over top of this. Uh, protect some of the roots that are poking out at the top, some of just those top roots. Um, but that's it. And so I've got another tree to do, um, and I've got some blueberry plants to get done. But this just took a while, and it's like I said, it's okay. You just you want to take your time. I mean, I've I've been fully drenched probably four or five times now and taking breaks. Uh, so uh, as you can see, it's getting uh, it's getting pretty dry. So. Uh, I just use, I don't, don't use any, I mean, hardwood mulch is the best. And if you have a local tree company, that's the best stuff to use. My wife really likes the way this looks. Uh, it's not dyed. It's just a pine bark. Um, so it, it's, uh, there's no harsh stuff in it. I've been using this brand for a while on every fruit tree I have, and I haven't shown any signs of um, issues or any problems with the tree. So uh, I really like it. She likes the way it looks. So... I think two bags should do it. And then I will put in a support post on this. I'll probably do a T post. I haven't really decided yet uh, what I want to do. I may go get the same garden 
tree stakes that I used on all the other trees so it's uniform. Uh, I just I haven't decided. But anyways, so now we'll put a layer of this down. And you want to keep the collar free and clear. You don't want any rot. But this will help hold that moisture in. Keep your tree uh, roots moist, especially on hot days. And then as we get closer to the winter time, uh, this will also help insulate and keep it from getting frozen, you know, warm, keeping that ground warm. I always put frost covers over, so there will be um, frost covers put down. But and my dog is going to run away with some of this too. She loves to chew on mulch, drives me crazy. Both of my dogs are garbage mouse, but I have golden retrievers, so what do you expect? Well, don't trip. And so I've kind of made a little crater slightly. You just don't want to climb up the edge of the tree. So again, there's no right or wrong way to do this, but that's it. So one tree in now it's time for another break so thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in um, the next video that we put out will hopefully be uh, finished uh, product of the yard and preparing for winter time as well as maybe harvesting some of the fall uh, crop uh, in the big garden so until next time thank you guys so much uh, hit that bell icon so you get notifications when we put up put videos up but more importantly uh, subscribe uh, like our channel we'd love to see you guys here um, it brings us joy uh, to have everybody watch us so thank you again and uh, have a great day